And good morning, Minecraft. This is Mr. Kassarian, and welcome to another tutorial in my IC2 series. Today, we are going to be talking about power generation. Okay. So without too much ado, let's get started. So, ladies and gentlemen, you have already met the generator. It, you per tick, it burns combustibles. Not too shabby. The next generator is the solar panel. The solar panel... Is it 1N or 2N? 1N. Got it right. The solar panel generates 1 EU per tick, but it's free. Absolutely free. This is the generator that those tin cables that I neglected to show you in the last episode are designed for. Tin cables have a very, very low, low, low energy loss rate. However, they can only carry ultra low current, uh, ultra low voltages, which means they're essentially useless for anything other than the solar panel. Now the solar panel is a very, well, it's moderately expensive. We take a look at the recipe. Uh, crap. Okay. Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like I won't be able to show you the solar panel recipe because I have Greg Tech installed. <clears throat> However, you can easily check the IC2 forums for the recipe. Uh, it is a generator, three coal dust, three glass, and two electronic circuits. All right. Our next generator is the geothermal generator. Now this, I know I could show you the recipe for. The geothermal generator, crafted like so, generates 20 EU per tick when fed lava. Now you can either feed it lava with a cell. Um, there we go. Any sort of liquid capsule, container, or lava bucket will work. Put it in, it charged up. All right. Now the cool thing about the geothermal generator is, if you noticed in our earlier example, the coal fuel generator will continue to burn coal even after the bat box or whatever it's connected to is filled up. That's because you can't just stop coal from burning after all. The geothermal generator will shut down automatically. It won't waste anything. As soon as the battery unit that it's trying to charge is full, it'll shut itself down and stop drawing fluid. The other nice thing about this I dig out a quick path underneath here and I put down an ender tank and a liquiduct is that any forge diction forge liquids dictionary pipe so waterproof pipes from buildcraft or liquiducts or liquid tesseracts for that matter will be able to transport lava into the geothermal generator. You can see its tank will start to fill up in a minute. It has a very large storage, but yep, there we go. The tank is in fact filling up. So that is the geothermal generator. It is actually one of my favorite methods for producing power early in the game. Simply drop a pump with an ender tank or a liquid tesseract in the nether, and you have a fair amount of power, as long as you don't mind replacing the geothermal generator every now and then. The next generator on our list is the water mill. Now the water mill is kind of a funny one. All right. The water mill can run in two ways. One, <clears throat> you can place water buckets in it to cause it to generate one energy unit per tick. Secondly, you can dig out an area like so. Ta-da. And place a water mill inside of it. If, for example, you get yourself an infinite water bucket, which doesn't seem to be working. Okay. Ah, there we go.
and you surround your generator with water like so. Ta-da. And run a, an energy line off of it. You can get a very small but not insignificant amount of power. Okay, very, very, very small, come to think of it. If we take a look at our EU reader, like that, you can see it's getting about six over 13 ticks. It's kind of a difficult number to read. Um, the EU reader here really has trouble reading the output from the water mill. Suffice to say, the more sides it's, sur it's surrounded on by water, excuse me, the better its generation will be. Not too shabby. Hey, it's free, okay? The next generator in our little series is the windmill. You can hear it's already running over there. The windmill is another free source of power. Okay. How much power it generates is actually dependent on where it's placed in the world. The higher up in the air it is, the more power it can generate. So, for example, a windmill placed below sea level will not generate any energy. Uh, sea level is 64, so I am well above that. Oh my. It's probably generating quite a bit because we're closer to world height. Uh, so, a windmill can generate up to 5 EU per tick. Anything past that, it can technically generate, but it has a chance of exploding, breaking, um, and dropping to the ground as a block, in which case you'll probably lose it. Now, the exact function is that the windmill has a range. Uh, one, two, three, four blocks on either side looking from the top, two blocks below it from the side, and four blocks in every other direction. Okay. For each obstructing block in its area of effect, it lowers the windmill's height by one. Obstructions also include torches and redstone. The roof of the world, however, is not an obstruction. Okay. The basic example that's listed on the IC2 forum is that a windmill placed as high as possible, 256 with no obstructions, will produce roughly 38, 3.8 EU per tick. Now, if there's a storm, it'll produce more, but be at a risk of breaking. Personally, I don't use these windmills much. I much prefer geothermal generators early on in the game. There are, of course, other ways to generate IC2 power, but we haven't gotten there yet. Speaking of other ways to generate IC2 power, we have the nuclear reactor. Again, its power generation varies, and it uses uranium cells. Now, it's a nuclear reactor, guys. What could possibly go wrong with that? Well, it can explode. <laughs> Suffice to say, it can, it will, and it might explode. It can also be expanded by creating reactor chambers, not more nuclear reactors, more reactor chambers, and attach them to the side. You can have up to five reactor cham- no, excuse me, six reactor chambers surrounding a single nuclear reactor, and it'll treat it as one block. In essence, a multi-block structure. Now, I'm not going to get into nuclear reactors in this episode, simply because they're a very complex system and I don't think I really have the time to delve into detail. Suffice to say that a nuclear reactor uses uranium cells and other components laid out on this grid to generate power, at the cost of generating heat. The entire point of designing a reactor is to balance the power that you're generating and the heat that you're producing. Generate too much heat, and the reactor blows up. Yes, it will blow up. And it will blow up spectacularly. 
But that about covers our IC2 power generators in vanilla. There's one more thing I want to show you, and it's a non-IC2 block. It's actually the steam turbine. It's a multi-block from Railcraft, and I'm showing it to you because it's quickly becoming one of our, my favorite power generation systems. Oops, not what I wanted. The steam turbine. The steam turbine takes in steam from a Railcraft reactor. Okay, a uh, Railcraft boiler. And it can generate up to 200 EU per tick using steam. Okay. And it is, in fact, a multi block, and it's fairly expensive. The way you build it is pretty simple it's a 3x2x2. By two by two. Okay. You put an item called a turbine rotor into the middle of it, in its interface. And you feed it steam from a boiler, a fair amount of steam. A full-sized high-pressure boiler will feed roughly two steam turbines. On the other hand, that means that a full-sized high-pressure steam boiler will generate about 400 energy units per tick, without the danger of exploding quite like a nuclear reactor will. So that about wraps it up, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we have now covered pretty much all of the power generation there is in vanilla industrial craft and in the next episode we'll be moving on to how to use that power and all the fun machines that ic2 adds all right ladies and gentlemen i want to thank you for joining me i hope you enjoyed this tutorial or if not enjoyed it at least found it useful i hope so at least all right ladies and gentlemen thank you so much if you did enjoy it or find it useful Leave me a comment, maybe subscribe to my channel, or throw up a like. As always, feel free to share this with your friends. Alright, happy mining!